It is the I-Pace, quite possibly the most significant car that Jaguar has produced since the E-Type. What is it? Well, it's an all-electric SUV, the world's first properly credible rival to the Tesla Model X and the Tesla Model S, and it's beaten the Germans to it. If you're British, that warm, fuzzy feeling you're currently feeling in your stomach, that's called pride. This is the Audi RS4, a traditional fast family wagon. And this is the I-Pace, a not so traditional fast family wagon. Now, both of these cars cost about 70 grand. Both do 0 to 60 in something, starting with a four. Both have near identical boot spaces and both just happen to be painted in rather fetching shades of farrow and bull. But the point here is they don't look anything like each other. That's because when you don't have to stuff a V6 twin turbo engine under the bonnet, well, you can squash the bonnet up and then you can move the front wheel forwards and then you can create more interior space. I'll be honest, the first time I saw these new and daring proportions, I was sick in my mouth just a little bit, but now I've had time to digest them, well, I can honestly say I really love it. It's refreshing, it's different to everything out there. So here's the thing about EVs, they all feel fundamentally similar to drive. Now that's not necessarily a criticism, it's just an observation, but when you strip away all the vibrations, all the engine noise, a gearbox to interact with, any sort of torque curve or turbo rush, all of that, what you're left with is something that feels quite homogenous. Don't get me wrong though, the way this car delivers its power is smooth, it's flat. If I reach down here, put it in dynamic mode and give it the beans, it properly takes off, grips and goes unlike anything else. But my point is, in the future, manufacturers are going to have to find new and exciting ways to differentiate their products. It can't just be a stonking gearbox and a loudspeaker exhaust as the Ferrari 812 will now demonstrate. See what I mean? Just a word here for the uh, I-Pace's interior because it's not as self-consciously non-conformist as a Tesla's. You don't just have one massive screen and to hell with distracting the driver. It's actually really nicely laid out. Lots of screens and look at this, actual buttons that you can push and they work. <laughs> what a novelty. Right, now for the road testy bit. And the thing to bear in mind here is that this car weighs 2.1 tonnes, but its centre of gravity is 130 millimetres lower than you get with an F-Pace. What that means is when you approach a corner, you sense all that mass. You think it's going to wallow and roll around and be really quite atrocious, but then you turn it in and it isn't. The body rolls a bit but then it stays there. The car controls its mass really, really nicely. The steering is good, like any other Jaguar. The brakes, too, are strong. All in all, it's a really, really impressive package. Currently, it says we have 121 miles until we run out of battery. Now, I know that is enough for what we need to do today, for driving around on these roads, for hooning about a little bit, for getting to our hotel later tonight. It's plenty, but still, my brain keeps telling me to stop prodding the throttle, you imbecile, you're gonna leave us stranded. Now, I don't feel like that in petrol cars, even when I've got 50, 20, 30 miles left in a tank. <sighs> stressing me out. Clearly, off-roading or green laning, as I think what I'm doing right now is called, isn't at all what this car was designed for, but you can get surprisingly far with four-wheel drive, a boatload of torque, and self-raising suspension. We're in the off-road height right now. And look, we're not scraping on anything. I just don't know where I am. Put it this way, if your commute is more than 200 miles, then probably not. But then, if your commute is more than 200 miles, you've got bigger problems to worry about. However, if you have off-street parking, a charger at work, or a public point nearby, then it might just work for you. If it's a 100 kilowatt rapid charger, you'll be topped up in about 45 minutes. If it's a seven kilowatt home charger, it'll take 10 hours. Either way, it will be cheaper than filling up with petrol. And then there's the free congestion charge for Londoners, tax breaks, and a four and a half thousand pound government grant to consider. Warning, owning an iPACE may involve maths. 
Because it starts at £60,000, the iPACE doesn't have the same social resonance as the $35,000 Tesla Model 3, but it does still represent a seismic shift that established manufacturers like this are now prepared to invest in proper electric cars. So this thing, well, it's as much about future-proofing the Jaguar brand as it is turning a juicy profit. But come on, let's not get too bogged down in the business, shall we? Because it's still a car, it still needs to be fast, it needs to handle, it needs to be desirable, and it needs to work. And it does. Terribly sorry, petrol. Electricity's arrived. If you're a fan of electricity, find out what happened when we spent a day with the new Tesla Model 3, or if you're sick of it, well, you can watch us burning some serious petrol in our Drag Race series. Either way, don't forget to like and subscribe.